Hello, welcome at our presentation about accessibility of computers for visually impaired users with a special focus on using maps. Let us introduce ourselves. My name is Milan Zamazal. I work as a senior software engineer at Red Hat and my site is all right. Well, hello everyone. My name is Sukash Director. I'm just finishing my master's degree at the Masaryk University and I'm also doing an internship at Red Hat. And what about my site? Well, I can see nothing. Lukash, how is it using computers while seeing nothing? The first problem is probably using a keyboard. Well, honestly, it's not the biggest problem, but yeah, it's a problem in the beginning because you have to basically learn the layout by your mind, but it's not so much special because even sighted people can do this, but when you have to do something on your computer and you can't do it using the keyboard. Yeah, that's a problem, I would say. And how about using a computer without a screen? Well, it's a little more interesting because there's often so many interesting things on the screen. So we have to use some special software called a screen reader, which basically tells you what this rectangle with this text is, is this a button or something different? And there are so many cases where the information for the screen reader aren't complete or are even misleading. So if you can, you probably could try to make our life easier. And I think there are also kinds of applications that make little sense to be used by blind users, such as a photo editor, right? Yeah, that's true. But even if the application use case makes sense, for example, some audio editing software, you have to think a little bit harder how to make all the interfaces accessible. But yeah, it can be done. So if you are developing something just uh, try how best you can or ask someone from the visual impact group because it can be done and it helps every time well and a little spoiler browsing maps can be tricky too yeah that's true so what kind of hardware do you basically need to use a computer well, in the first place, I need a keyboard, but then I need uh, some speakers or headphones as well. And if uh, everything is interesting and nice, I can have a bell display, which is basically a device which can show you a part of the text in Braille which can be useful, for example, when doing some math exams or spell checking or programming and things like that. Uh, sounds interesting. Can you show us how to use a computer with speech output? Uh, sure, of course. So in the first place, we usually turn the computer on. And after power comes, you have all the boot screens and things like that, which are well, interesting for geeks and so on, but aren't accessible. But it's not some kind of deal breaker because you don't need to access this often. But if, uh, for example, you have a corporate policy for disk encryption, it may become a little bit tricky because you have to basically guess the correct time for the password because even there you don't have uh, even some kind of beep or something like that. So you just basically guess and when the time is right, and I hope 
it's now you type the password and then you basically wait and hope you did everything correctly so now we are waiting for a screen integer to come up to finally get some speech yeah that's right the standard GNU Linux screen reader on is called Orca, and it's a piece of a software that displays contents of applications using speech output or a braille display device. Speech output is usually easier and faster to use, but less accurate. If you need accuracy or perhaps silence, then a braille display can come handy. Also, braille displays are limited to those eight dots per character or per place, while speech is more flexible with different voices, volume levels, pitch levels, and so on. Yeah, and it seems we are nearing the right time. Enter password for MedConf 2021 user password text. Yes, finally, we got, we got something. It's the login screen, and it's nice to have a speech here because we can use all the controls on this screen but if you want to try this at home you have to turn the screen reader on on the screen as well but we can finally write the password as everyone else black circle black 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 circle black circle black circle black black circle and we can log in screen reader on yeah thank you and if you want to play with this notification at home, new linux security alert abc denial click icon turn the screen reader on as notification. well a second time because notification these new set settings are for each user depending on the distribution this may be available on the toolbar or in general settings yeah notification so, so now we can do a lot of things of course we can use the arrow keys to browse the desktop icons which sounds like this computer icon i will use home icon trash icon and so on but we can of course do more interesting things we can for example go to the web which we will do right now through the applications menu and the internet sub, sub menu. Applications menu, accessories menu, graphics menu, internet menu, FileZilla, Firefox, Hello. desktop, trash icon, applications menu, menu. Restore session M dash no, restore. I won't. And then we land on a loading. Page. Please wait. Fedora logo image link. Finished loading Fedora project. Start page. Page has one landmark. Eleven headings. Twenty six unvisited links. Fedora logo image and link. We get project a, tidy version. A, a short sponsor. summary of the page like this. Here you can do a lot of things. For example, if you have no idea what's on the page you can use your arrow keys which sounds like this the latest news from fedora magazine heading level 4 Feb 15 image installing next cloud 20 on fedora linux with podman heading level 3 link of course why not but we aren't going to do this for this time maybe in the future 24 containers may open source productivity platform dot 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 and so on but if you know the page and you need for example some link you aren't going to use the arrow keys you would probably use something like a list of links which sounds like this okay links 26 items found dialogue Table with 26 rows, 3 columns. Fedora logo. Unvisited. HTTPS colon slash slash start dot fedora project dot org slash n slash. Uh, one 
pretty nice feature of this table is that you can see the address of the link, which is quite interesting for geek users, but and you don't have these on Windows or other operating systems, but American yeah. sponsored community project, project you Tidy Bird. can just basically browse the table and then you can activate one of these links as you wish. Of course, you can get a list of more things like all the headings, lists, tables, and so on and so on. But it's, well, it's basically the same and not probably much interesting. So let's move on. Sounds because... usable. How about browsing uh, maps on the web? Is it also possible? Yeah, I was just getting to it. Naturally, we can go to opencmap.org. Search with go. P E M N unselectedstreetmap.org slash unselected. S. Search with Google or enter address editable combo box https colon slash slash www.openstreetmap.org. Search entry. Focus mode. And we get the search field where we can, for example, type a query because why not? P-R-N-O. P-R-N-O. And even the speech isn't very useful. We get some results. Visited link. Browse mode. Open street map nominated link heading level 4. B-R-N-O. Archers B-R-N-O. Mesto. Jitomoravsky Kraj. Southeast. Check your visited link. Yeah, you get this weird pronunciation when you are using an English voice and check names, but it's well, it's just funny and you can't do much with this. And if you open this link, leaving form relation B R N O four hundred thirty-eight thousand one hundred seventy-one open street map document web. You get the page. Find directions between leaving form. 403 visited link. But uh, a visually impaired each person can't, of course, see the map, so it's kind of sad, and you basically can't do much here. This doesn't look very useful indeed, but and... OpenStreetMap is not only pictures, unlike proprietary maps. It's also data. Can we use that? Fortunately, we actually can. Well, everything started one day when I was just walking a street and wondering what else is here. I know a few things, but there's probably more. So I created an application called Fear Streets, which basically allows the visually impaired to walk around the streets and see what's around, do some searches and so on and so on. And I would say it's quite useful. And weren't such applications already available? What does make Field of Streets unique? Well, for mobile operating systems, there are many applications of this form. So there's probably not much you can do as a sole developer, which would be so innovative. But for desktop operating systems, most of the attempts for, were abandoned a long, long time ago, and to add to it, they weren't cross platform So there's uh, something that, which can be improved. Mainly, you can, for example, make the application cross platform so it runs on Windows and Linux. Definitely, it was tested there. Of course, you have to make the application accessible because then the development would be quite hard. And because the application uses OpenStreetMap data, whenever the data are improved, the application improves as well. Okay. Sounds interesting. Can you show us how is it works? Fill the streets. Of, of course. Desktop. Trash icon. Feel the streets desktop configuration file. So first we have to launch the thing. 
Select an area dialog. Available areas. Antwerpen. Updated. Last updated web 17th 2021 to 3550 AM CT. File size 198.64 MyB. Created Sun 06 Oct 2019 11.43.53 PM Sest. List with 31 items. We get a list which looks like this and now we will select an area. One of these. Land PRNO PRNO test of SI. Uh, you are entering crossing. You are crossing yeah. road Kunikova. And because we have even a bookmark for some interesting place, we will go, go to one of these. Data entry dialogue. Six days. The core before the crop. Select and you are leaving crossing. Road Kunikova. Tertiary continue. We are test of SI. Somewhere on road Konyasova in Brno near a crossing and if we do a single step you are crossing road residential you could turn to the right and continue for 41 meters you are crossing road Klusachkova residential you could turn to the left and continue for 270 meters or you can continue along the current road for another 1700 meters on the front right is a shop tetter on the front left is a shop tabak pike Maybe you heard the step sound, but it was quite uh, quiet, but you can definitely hear the crossing sounds. So yeah, we are on a crossing and we can basically see the streets, but even there we can see a slight mistake in the data because the right street should have a name, but it doesn't have one. So the application has to fall back on this more complicated description of the crossing which would be more nicer if the names were correct but yeah some flow i hope fix this one soon enough so we can walk further and show some more things so let's go you cross road residential you cross road Klusachkova residential now you're on road Kunikova tertiary on the front left is a brass interesting object found after 37 meters yeah we found a nearby grass so yeah it's interesting but there are probably more interesting things before us, so we will go further. On the front left is a shop optic centrum and Hachek Nansky. Interesting object found after eight meters. Yeah, another of these tries of an English voice to spell a Czech name. So yeah, it's a shop. But there's more interesting things. So on the front right is a shop textbo. Interesting object found after 20 meters. Yeah, we went 20 meters and reached a nearby shop, which is... Uh, it's a shop, but let's go on. On the front right is a waste basket. Interesting object found after 5 meters. Yeah, it's interesting to see these baskets in the data because sometimes it's useful to know where they are. But let's go on and some more. On the front right is a village green. Interesting object found after 12 meters. Uh, another kind of uh, grass. I have no idea why there are two types of o OSM objects, but he here they are. But let's go on. On the front right is a residential. Interesting object found after five meters. Yeah, there's some good, some kind of land, but let's go on as well. On the front right is a waste basket. Interesting object found after one meter. Yeah, an underbasket, but it's not the thing we are looking for, so we go slightly more. You are entering crossing. You are crossing road footway. You could turn to the left and continue for seven meters. Or, you can continue along the current road for another 1,609 meters. Interesting object found after 4 meters. Yeah, so we basically found another crossing. But this time, we are only informed that there's a footway, which is... Uh, it's interesting to know, but 
we have no idea where we would end up if, if we took the crossing. There's not much we can do with because there's no association of those footways to the roads. So uh, it would be nice to have them, but we don't. So we can at least look nearby what's around because there's definitely something which gives us something like this. Near my objects, 130 objects shown. Objects. Road Cunicoma tertiary. Distance 0 meters, 203 degree relatively. Of List course. with 130 items. We get the road. Road Fosway. Distance 0 meters, 203 degree relatively. And the crossing. crossing. Distance 0 meters, 203 degree relatively. Crossing. Yeah. Distance. But. Railway. Distance 1 meters, 70 degree relatively. Yeah, that's interesting because from this data we know that's quite nearby is the railway and if we want to know more, we can even look. Object properties tree. Specific properties expand type. Tram. Yeah, we can see that's a tram railway which is nice and everything. And of course, from this, we could have a good look for, for the parent and even found out what line this thing is. But it's not something we will do now because we have some time, but I think it, the voice was enough and well, let's probably talk a little bit more. Very nice demo. Thank you. Action. That's nothing. You have already mentioned some problems with data. Is it the only thing to work on or do you have some other future plans uh, with Field of Streets? Well, I would like to find out how other people are using the applications, what are they missing or things like that. So. I'm planning to make a study between all the visual impaired people I can find. And then I would like to speak about this application even abroad because uh, there are so many visual impaired people in our country, but worldwide there are more of, more of them. And of course, adding features for example, some dark editing or something like this is even, yeah, it's possible too, but I've done uh, some actual time plans. We will see. And multilingual speech output can be also a challenge with such an application. Uh, it would be so cool to have this thing, yeah. So good luck with all that. Thank you. <laughs> Let's conclude this session with a few thoughts on accessibility generally. In my opinion, accessibility is not optional in high quality software. The better the software, the better its accessibility and the better its usage for all the users, not just those visually impaired ones, it's related. There are three basic things, not breaking things, keep things working well and improving things. If a new software version breaks functionality that used to work previously, all the users will be unhappy. It means there are there is some problem with the software development and some things should be changed about that to make all the users satisfied. So in such a case, the software development process and testing should be improved and regressions should be avoided. If something already works, it's good to follow the right practices. For example, if you add a new code to an application and forget about keyboard navigation, then not only visually impaired users will be unhappy about that. The same with data. Perhaps there are some OpenStreetMap contributors among you. 
if you edit OpenStreetMap data, please try to avoid those little mistakes that can break not only field streets, but also other applications such as navigation or other software. And of course, there is always a big space for improvements. If you would like to help with accessibility, you can look at accessibility related bugs in your favorite distribution and try to fix them. You can work on installers, desktop environments, applications. You can fix missing keyboard navigation, missing labels, and other accessibility defects. It's also good to help with documentation. There is surprisingly little amount of documentation how to write well accessible desktop applications for GNU Linux. And of course, every newcomer can bring some new fresh idea that can make change and further improvements for accessibility or anything else. And again, don't forget, for example, if you improve audio output in your distribution, then all the users will be grateful for such a change, not only those who are blind or visually impaired. Here we have a couple of slides with links providing more information about different topics on accessibility, various areas. You can look at them later and find more information about those things at the referred sites. And one final remark. Accessibility is actually not that difficult. Well, browsing maps is a special topic, but in most areas we know what to do and how to do it. The major and the worst problem is to actually do it. If software developers or web designers don't care and make the web or software inaccessible for handicapped users generally, not those visually impaired ones only, then they exclude them from using the web and from using the software, which in contemporary society all often means that they are excluded from the society completely. And uh, let's not wait until law enforces everything that won't happen and perhaps shouldn't happen. Let's try be welcoming to handicapped users and make software well accessible and this way make the lives of handicapped users easier. And that's all from us for attention. And do you have any questions? Thank you for your presentation. There are some questions for you. So there's a question from Ben. Are there ways to do CI testing of applications to automatically check accessibility for visually impaired users, or does that need to be manually tested? Honestly, I know, I don't know. Uh, there are APIs, uh, accessibility APIs that uh, allow screen reader uh, to work and do their job of presenting the contents of applications. And those APIs can be used also for testing desktop generally, not just accessibility, but that the application has the right buttons and so on, and it reacts properly. And uh, this is also used uh, at Red Hat for CI testing desktops, but whether given applications such as Firefox, LibreOffice, and so on use accessibility testing in their CI pipelines, I don't know. It's true that there are sometimes regressions with those applications. So I suspect if there is that testing, it's not completely sufficient and uh, those regressions are not always avoided. But I don't know uh, what actually is there. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And the second question is by Jakub. Is there any tooling to find accessibility issues within OpenStreetMap, for example? It feels like that's an important thing that can be fixed quite easily if pointed out. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not aware about any accessibility, special purpose accessibility testing tools, um, because uh, 
there are probably not so many applications like fill the streets or something similar but generally for instance JOSN, the tool commonly used to think open street map has some validations and i think it should uh, warn about uh, those cases when for instance uh, like we have seen that uh, a part of the street is nameless the name tag is not there or when uh, some points are close uh, one to the other which uh, but not joined which makes often problems with navigation and would also confuse fill the streets because then a crossing is not a crossing anymore and uh, so if you pay attention to those warnings by JOSM, then I think the data will be definitely better and better accessible as well. Thank you. And uh, another question by Vladimir. Uh, does the ongoing move to Wayland create uh, visible problems for accessibility? He asks as a developer of a GUI application that has this problem the Anaconda installer, and he wonders if this is a pattern. There are definitely problems with Wayland. Uh, it's a new thing and uh, accessibility has problems, for instance, with the new security features. Lukáš, can you probably elaborate on that? Yeah, well, of course, the most basic things work. So if uh, that you can of use some applications even on Valent, but there are some issues, for example, with more advanced features. For example, if you <clears throat> need to emulate some mouse movements and you can't do it because the security model is quite different and the coordinate systems as well, course you can work around it on some level but that it's a problem and there are probably some more honestly it's quite uh, hard sometimes to find out whether the valent is the root cause because you are in this case you probably changing a lot more things maybe the UI backends and so on. So you can probably see bugs elsewhere as well. So yeah, there may be problems, but it's not every time <clears throat> obvious where the bug really is. And it's problem. It's a more general problem with finding the root case of the bugs. Sometimes there are so many layers where the thing can hide. 